Happy Halloween! This is Lujara speaking. Welcome to Ultra React, episode number 562. And today we're reacting to Purple Roads Podcast, episode 46. Kimberly J. Brown of Halloween Town. And we're going to react to this beginning in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I've played Barney the Dinosaur on tour, and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now, my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind-the-scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to another episode of Purple Roads. I'm Kerry Stinson. And we're doing a little bit of Halloween this week okay. with Kimberly J. Brown from Halloween Town and so much more. Wow. Kimberly, how are you? I'm awesome. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I am great. I'm thrilled to have you here. Um, there's just a lot to talk about. You have <laughs> such an interesting career so far um, from Broadway. And you, you did a little uh, daytime TV and then... Uh, Halloween Town, which we'll talk about. So, you know, I want to know, how did you get started? Really that simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was, I think about five or so, and I was living in Maryland. I was born in Maryland. Wow. Um, I just always had, I had several imaginary friends. I was always in different dress-up clothes and, and, you know, performing around the house. And so my parents put me into the performing arts class as sort of an avenue to uh, to get it out. And sure. um, I believe the story goes that there was um, some scouts there from New York. And it wasn't initially my parents' intention to, um, you know, have me in that class for that reason, but they came and, and watched some of us. And I think I was one of the few uh, people that they had said, one of the, you know, the kids that they had, would recommend me coming to New York if, if they ever decided to take that on and so my parents decided to try it out and and we would drive or we <laughs> i couldn't drive then right. they would drive me um back and forth from new york to maryland which is about a four-hour drive and i started auditioning for like print and commercials and that sort of thing at like five six years old and then i got my first broadway show at seven and i just um i, I was hooked i i wow. think they could see that too i think that was once i had a little taste of it i just completely fell Head over heels in love with it, and there, here I am, you know, all, all these years later, and I still can't do anything else. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I totally get that. Where, where in Maryland were you born? I was born in Gaithersburg. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I was born in D.C. Oh, okay. And that's where Jim Lair and Robert McNeil tapes and the news hour stuff. Continue on. And grew up in Bethesda. Yes. Uh, in Texas. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm in Texas. I'm proud Texan, but we were in wow. we're in Texas now. But yeah, I was I uh, grew up in that area. I love it there. I still go back uh, a couple times a year, as often as I can, because my sister and the other family members still live there. Wow, and it's it's pretty special up there. Yes, for sure. Um, so it's fascinating because I worked obviously with a lot of kid actors. Mm -hmm. um, what in the world was it like to be on Broadway at seven years old? <laughs> It was incredible. I, I can remember very specifically uh, being on stage and just going, wow, this is, this is amazing. This is like, I, I, I just something, I just knew at that, even at that age, I think about that now and I'm like, wow, that, you know, it's, it's such a different experience from, you know, when you're an adult, you have, you don't have the same awareness as you do when you're an adult. So um, a lot of those experiences, I think about that now and I'm like, wow, being that young, like, and just going, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I, I try oh. to remember that now to have, to try to hold on to that same sense of, of wonder and, and the joy of it when, um, you know, it, it's as an adult, you know, things have obviously are a little bit different now. And when you have been doing it for so long, you kind of, you know, I want to always remember that, that joy, but that was, um. Yeah, that was just the best. I, I I did a straight play at seven, and then I did um, 
uh, Les Mis at eight, and um, that still to this day is my favorite mm -hmm. musical. And then I, I did Showboat at nine as well, and that was just, um, I, they were all amazing experiences. So do you have ner nerves? Do you understand at seven years old, at eight and nine, going the stages you've been on and the crowd you're in front of? Absolutely. I think I, I can remember it. I, I think when I was first starting Les Mis and, you know, the first time mm -hmm. you see young Cosette and Les Mis is when she's by herself and she sings Castle on a Cloud. Mm -hmm. And before we go on stage, we're kind of waiting because the, the stage is um, at the time, I don't know if they still do it, but is it, it revolves, it rotates. So young Cosette, like we're always waiting behind the curtain. And then as the, um, mm -hmm. previous scenes en end, then they rotate us out and we're sitting, you know, in the new, um, mm -hmm. in our new setting and we, we, you know, do the solo. So I can remember sitting there before going out and going, oh my gosh, I'm actually gonna mm -hmm. be by myself, you know, and sing this song to this whole theater mm -hmm. and, um, just kind of taking a minute and going, okay, and kind of praying and going, okay, this is like, I can do this. And, it's when you do get out there, you can't really mm -hmm. see the entire audience, like all of the different, it's kind of all black. So that I remember going, okay, all right, this is, you know, that's cool that I, you know, it, the, that I didn't fully see everybody initially. Cause yep. that was, but once I did it the first couple of times, I just, it was like, um, I, I just, I wanted to go back and do it again. Like it was, Still. I was like, oh my gosh, that was fun. And then you kind of forget. You forget about the the nerves part and, and kind of learn to to use that a little bit if you can. Um, then then you get the first taste of applause. <laughs> What's that experience like? It's it's overwhelming a little bit. It's wow. you know, my first curtain call and doing those kinds of things are just um, it's surreal to have an entire theater you know, applauding and, and going, oh, wow, they, you know, they see me and this is like, they, they, they're not only watching something I'm doing, but they liked it. Like it's, um, it's surreal in the best way, but it's, it's quite a, it's quite an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I've had fortunate to, to be on stage and, and done both sides of it. Yeah. And there's, it's, it's almost addicting. Mm -hmm. uh, that that live audience there's Absolutely. something that's just it's almost hard to ex to explain um the 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 freedom and the importance to to kind of remember what you're doing and obviously do the same things and but it's it's um uh you, you never know exactly where it's gonna it's gonna go sometimes and the energy is exactly different. yes oh yeah it's a fresh energy every night you don't know what what of your performance or what of the show the audience is going to react to, you know, one yeah. night versus the next night and different things happen and, and it kind of, it keeps you on your toes and you kind of feed off of, you know, the energy, the energy and the reaction of the audience. And it, it makes it fresh and exciting every night. Like I, I've had people ask me about that. Like, does it get like, you know, eight shows a week is that, um, does it get boring? And it really doesn't because it's wow. everybody who's coming to see the show is, you know, for all intents and purposes, not seen it before. And you're kind of, you know, taking them on this adventure for the first time. And that is, um, it's a, it's exciting and it's, it's a privilege to be able to do that for people. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? We experienced this when our, when our kids um, had to move on because mm -hmm. they, they aged or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for them to understand, like adults do, when something ends. Was it hard for you when that first show ended and you, you moved to the next one? Or were you it just ready for the opportunity? It definitely was. I think I was fortunate to always work with really great people. And I think you get into a rhythm and you form friendships and it becomes like a little family in its own way where you kind of have a routine and, and, you know, put on this, you know, magic together. And it, it, it was, it was something, an aspect of it that I had to get used to uh, when I was young and kind of go, okay, this is uh, like, I have to, you know, figure out, I have to accept how I feel about right. this and then, yeah. and then move on. And, and, 
There was other times, like when I left um, the soap opera I was on after being on it for five years, that wow, I did not know. Um, I did not know my last day was my last day, basically. Oh, wow. I, and so that was, at the time, probably a, it was a blessing because I, I think I would have been completely, you know, it would have been so hard to like be there and know it was it was my last day because mm-hmm. it's you do it's you um you you form bonds and you you know it's every every experience is something um it's just something special really so it's yeah you kind of had to learn very early on and go okay all right here we go next one how old were you um when that ended when the guiding guiding light ended i was on the show from i i left the show i believe when i was 13 because i had actually gotten um, Halloween Town and another movie called Tumbleweeds back to back. So I was had moved to Los Angeles before that, and then was commuting back to New York for Guiding Light, and then booked both of those films and kind of wow. went, okay, I guess. So it was a good reason to have to leave, but it was right. um, yeah, I just didn't know when I was shooting that my last day that that you know that I wasn't going to be able to come back. So and in but. And then I ended up actually going back to the show in 2006, I want to say, for uh, they brought my character back for a little bit to say hi. So that was nice because I got to see a lot of people that I wow. didn't necessarily get to say goodbye to the first time. But looking back, I was like, no, that was that was probably a good thing because my little 13-year-old heart would have been so sad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What was it like leaving Broadway and going to Guiding Light, going to TV? It's a completely... Uh, different experience. What was it's it like for you? Very different. And it's especially doing <coughs> Guiding Light at that time. That was when we, uh, I think some of the formats have shifted since then, but they, we would do an entire episode, sometimes more than an episode in a day. So you had three cameras that would, you know, you rehearse and tape it and it would move very quickly, which was a format that to get, I had to get used to, but it was also great training because if you had a heavier storyline for a little while, you would just have pages and pages of dialogue and things to do, and it moved very quickly. Um, so that was that was great training ground for me, not only because of that, and, and just the amazing actors that I got to work with mm-hmm. on the show were just, um, just watching them. I was always in awe, and it kind of, it taught me a lot, but for a while, I was actually doing Guiding Light during the day, and then at night, I was going to do Showboat. So I was, mm. I was kind of doing both, and I think about that now, and I'm like, wow, there's that. Can I get some of that youthful energy back? Because <laughs> how the heck did I do that? Man, I wish I could do that now. I think about that now. I'm like, whoo, that's a, that's a day. Like, you know, but that was, um, I, I was thrilled. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be doing anything else. That was... That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I actually want to ask you about that because I had John Tartaglia on not too long ago. Wow. And he did that kind of thing for a short period of time where he's doing Beauty and the Beast and Johnny on the Johnny and the Sprites. And it, yeah, Johnny and the Sprites was boring. Get there you are. He near near killed him to the point where they told him you've got to pick one. I mean, was was oh, there yeah. a, was there a point? Now he was he was older than you were at that time, but. Was there a point where you knew you just couldn't keep going or you were just so excited you just kept going? Well, it, it, it worked better for the with the soap opera taping schedule because a lot of times you would either work in the morning or the afternoon. So sometimes you would have to be there at 7 a.m., but you would be done by like 12 or 12.30, what they called their a.m. session. Or you were in the p.m. session, you got there at like 12 or 1, and then you were done by 5 or something. So it wasn't... Uh, unless you had, unless there was a big wedding or something like that, you weren't really there like all day. So it, it made it a little bit more manageable because I was also doing school and I was just going to ask you, like, weren't you doing school at the same time? Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's funny now that I'm an adult in the business and think about what it's like for kids because at the time, um, at the time in New York, I don't think there was the same like labor laws that there is now, but basically kids uh, under the age, I think, of 16 can only work nine and a half hours a day, and three of those hours have to be school. So when we're not on set, like, we had to go and, you know, do the mandatory schooling, which 
was always a bummer because you just wanted to stay on set and have fun. But uh, I really enjoyed school as well, and I was using a, um, a private correspondence program where I had uh, videotapes, which at the time, now, you know, everything's much more virtual, but at the time it was kind of a new thing. Mm -hmm. But I, so I got to put in a videotape into a VCR, aging myself, wow. and watch. Oh, don't, don't, don't watch worry here. You were, you were safe about <laughs> aging because I am way past that. You're, you're safe here. Wow. So we had to, I, you know, I would watch a classroom and, and kind of work with the with the class on the tape. So that was that was fun for me. But it was, yeah, it was a, it was a balance of sort of switching out of that mode of working and then going, okay. And I, I always loved school, so um, I was I was glad I got to take them along with me. But again, I think about that now, and I'm like, wow, it's you know. Adults get to go and sit and relax and stuff when they're not working, and you know, kids are kind of going back and forth between school and set, and it's, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a it's a different kind of balance. But you, I feel like you kind of get trained in that mindset very young that like, okay, this is what I'm doing, you know, I'm working and I'm going to school. So, where did you learn the skill of being able to to memorize that much lines? Because I know a lot with those those uh, as you as you're saying with a soap opera, it's it's a lot and it's fast. Wow. It is. I I I think that I think Guiding Light in particular was very good at teaching me, um, kind of just training me to do that more quickly. I I just was always I was an I've always been an avid reader and love learning. So I think I kind of had that on my side a little bit. Um, just I just genuinely enjoyed it and it, and it did come to me I feel like a little bit more easily but I I think without guiding light I, I think that would have it it just definitely helped me kind of mm. go okay this is you know and and lock in very young and, and learn what that was like to um to have to take on you know a lot of dialogue and stuff mm -hmm. so you've done both New York and LA which is is fascinating and at that young age what was it like leaving New York and going to LA I was excited and also I still miss New York. I mean, I, I grew up in the city and, and um, it just has a, just such an amazing energy to it. Um, but I was excited to come out and see the big tall palm trees that I had seen on TV and movies and all that. And um, I had come out, I had done a pilot in LA when I was like 11. And so I'd gotten a little taste of Hollywood in LA and then, came out a few years later more permanently and um mm. I was super excited I had a, a couple of friends that I had done Broadway with had also come out around the same time so it was nice to be able to make that transition and have a few friends that were also going through it as well and um it was it was just so different it was very sunny and, and warm and like okay here we wow. go and um and I still love I still love being out in LA, but I, I still, I call myself an East coast girl at heart because I, I like seasons and I like, you know, snow and that sort of thing. We don't get a lot of that in LA, but it's, um, it, it's, you know, especially not now, but it's, um, I, I'm, I realize what a, a gift it is to kind of be able to have a, a taste of, of both coasts. Man. We have a lot of people that watch this show that, that want to get into the business or just fascinated by the business. What is it like for a kid to go through pilot season? You know, we had several of the Barney kids would go do it. And, you know, you just wish them luck because you know it's so difficult. What was it like for you to go to L.A. and do that? It's a lot. It's, it's, a, um, it's a very fast-paced, uh, unique experience, really, I think. You have to become very adaptable to um, auditioning different projects and characters. Sometimes it's a little bit different now because of technology and stuff like that. But I mean, at the time, you know, you would have to physically go to more auditions and that sort of thing, and sometimes have multiple in a day, um, which for me was very exciting. I think um, I think every young performers in the business I think when we enjoy it like it's you enjoy the work and I think that kids that that are meant to be in the business and kind of uh, are adaptable to it kind of just 
it's hard to explain, I think, to people who perhaps aren't in the business, like who go, oh, well, you know, didn't you, did you understand what was going on? And did you miss, you know, being with friends and like sort of that, you know, more normal child experience. But it was, um, to me, that was all, it just was so fun. That was exactly what I wanted to be doing. And it, it it's, um, but it is, it's, it's very different. And it would be, you learn very quickly to not get too attached to, any project or anything you're auditioning for because it's you just have to learn at a young age that it's not about you <laughs> in so many different ways yeah. in the business it's just mm -hmm. it's not you you do your best and and you then you literally have to let it go and it's um it can be difficult as an adult so it's mm -hmm. it's i think a process especially for kids and i look back again and sometimes go wow that was you know you just you kind of do your thing and you don't, I don't think you really totally know better until you get a little bit older and you're like, wow, this is a weird thing to go through. <laughs> right. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's what we do and we, you know, wouldn't do anything, wouldn't want to do anything differently, you know? Well, I, I don't think you can. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you kind of, you, yeah, you kind of have to, have to adapt to it when, when performing and acting is what you want to do, but it's, I, uh, I sometimes giggle at, at different people that, um, you know, friends or people I meet that kind of hear what we do throughout different points in the year for projects, and they're just like, what? And then I kind of feel myself, and I go, I guess that does sound, you know, I'm so used to it, but it, it's a very interesting, very interesting process. It, it had to have been difficult, mm -hmm. and I, I've talked about this before on this show about, get, you know, we all have to deal with in this business here, and no, hearing, you know, hearing no. Yes. But you had so much success early on. The first time you were told no, was that really difficult for you? Or something you had already kind of prepared yourself for? I I think it, it you know, for every, for whatever amount of success that people see um, an actor go through is probably 10 times, they've had 10 times the amount of, of no's. It just... Mm. There's, there's so many, um, I, I, I think you just learn very quickly that, that no's are, yeses are very special when they do come and no's are just, they become kind of a part of the process. And if you, it would behoove you to get used to that because it, it just, um, it's, it's so much more common, I think, than people realize and people, you know, when they ask me what projects I'm doing or what I'm up to and it's and it's like well do you want to hear about yes the, the thing I just filmed or about the you know the 50 other things that I've gone through this past six months where I've you know it's come down between me and one person or you know just so many wild stories that wow um people just don't realize how much it's just kind of ingrained in what you do and um and it, it that comes as as I, I want to say as quickly, if not before, because I, I definitely at five years old had um, auditioned for things and, and didn't get so many things before I got my first Broadway show. And so it it's a, it's a major part of, of doing this that um, it, it, you kind of, you just, again, you kind of have to adapt to very quickly. I've got to think that your parents were very helpful to you mm -hmm. at, at a young age to, to help a five-year-old understand why you didn't get something that you wanted that you wanted so bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think initially it was I didn't quite um, you know when you're that young you don't understand obviously everything behind it. And it was more like right. okay we're gonna go meet this person and then we'll you know there was always park visits and other things built into mm -hmm. our day so it wasn't all just about you know that one experience and then as you start to get older um, they were they were very good at. A, always making sure that I was enjoying what I was doing and that, um, you know, always gave me the, the opt out, you know, uh, that if it ever didn't become fun for me or I wasn't enjoying it anymore, that we could be done. Like there was no pressure yeah. in that way. Um, and there was also just, they made it very equally as important to, to be a kid, to, you know, have social visits with friends, to go out, to... Um, you know, be in on different sports teams and stuff as a teenager, like different things just to um, make sure that it, 
it wasn't always about the business. And wow. Um, and I am very grateful for that because it's so important, I think, for you to you know get to know yourself outside of the business as well because it it can be it can be very overwhelming at times. Oh, without without <laughs> question, it could absolutely be that. Yeah. So then comes along Halloween Town, and mm -hmm. I, I want to spend spend a while talking on it. Um, you know, it's definitely something that you're known for, and it's something that's meant a lot to people. Um, did you have any idea that this project was going to turn into something um, very big in your career? Not at all. It, it when we did the first Halloween Town, I think it was only the like third or fourth original Disney Channel movie. And Disney wow. Channel itself was very new and I don't even think was in um, every home like across the US. Like it wasn't like a, wow. a standard cable channel like it is now. So it was very new and exciting. And um, I was thrilled at the idea of, of playing a teenage witch because those mm -hmm. kinds of fun magical roles, you know, don't come along all the time. And wow. Um, and of course, then the icing on the cake is getting to work with Debbie Reynolds, and we, yeah, the late uh, Debbie Reynolds does. Rest in peace to her. Continue on. Um, we had a, a, just a blast, and I think we're um, so thrilled to sort of watch it unfold as more people saw it. But it, at the time, it was just that it was just that one movie, and then over the years, as as they got a little bit more popular, we were. So excited to you know get the chance to to make sequels. So did you know was was Debbie Reynolds already connected to the project when you you came to the project, or did that happen afterwards? I if I remember correctly, I think she signed on either at some point when I was still in the audition process, or maybe right after I found found out I had gotten it. I my parents will probably remember that a little bit more clearly, but um, yeah, it, it was. Some I, I don't think it was initially presented to me when I first auditioned that she was starring in it, but I was so excited. I I hadn't seen a ton of her work. I remember my dad got me um, Unsinkable Molly Brown to watch, and then I think in the course of us working together, I saw Singing in the Rain, of course, because that's just a you know a classic, fantastic movie. Exactly, she was in Charlotte's Web, a nineteen seventy three movie. And was prepared by Barbara, and she asked uh, Joseph Barbara to be part of it. Continue on. Um, but yeah, it was it was like wow, like this is this just made this so much just so much more special and and unique to be able to be uh, to to play her granddaughter. Wow, what did you learn from her? Oh my gosh, we could spend, I could sit here for hours and tell you things. We have, right? we have some time. Okay. We have some, we have some time. Uh, I, I'm just fast. I'm big singing in the rain. Love it. Love her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can just imagine the opportunity to, to work with a legend like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, that was definitely, um, it, you know, initially in meeting her, you know, you, you're never sure when you meet somebody of legendary status such as herself that, you know, how they're going to be. Are they going right. to, you know, are they going to be nice? Are they going to believe their own publicity? Like, what's, you know, what are we? Sure. What are we sure. And she was just the kindest, most loving, funny woman ever. Um, yeah. Took all of us kids under her wing and was very... Um, very supportive and very giving and, and always treated me like her peer. And it was just fascinating to watch, especially when we did the first movie and I was 13, like to watch somebody of that stature, like, um, you know, there, there would be fans and everything that would gather in the neighborhoods where we were shooting. And she always made it a point to go and walk over to the crowd and say hello and make a little joke and, and, you know, thank people for coming out and saying hi. And it was such a good thing for me to see at such a young age because she really taught me what a gift it is to be mm -hmm. able to perform for people. And she never, never lost sight of that over the years of us working together. And then um, we still stayed in touch after Halloween Town High. And I went and saw some of her variety shows and, wow. and had dinner with her and, and all that. And it was so... Um, thrilling to to watch her in that element and also just she never wanted 
never wanted to stop. Like even in the times where she was, um, I think she did Halloween Town too with, I want to say she was getting over a hip injury or something like that. And, and she just, yeah, she just never wanted to stop. She loved performing. She loved making people happy. And um, it was, I, I just think that was so great for me to see as a young performer and, and um, just get that, you know, that perspective. Did you learn tips from her, watching her work? Absolutely. I think she was always very, um, wanted to share any wisdom that she could, told so many stories about her experiences and, and her life and made jokes, much to her expense of, of things, you know, that you had heard in the news about her and stuff when she was young. But um, mm -hmm. she was very... Uh, very dedicated to her character, but also such a supportive member of the cast and crew. She wanted to, um, you know, tried to move ladders for crew members, like, and, you know, and, like, and always looked out for all of the actors that were on set and, and, you know, wanted everybody to shine as brightly as they could around her. And so that was um, just so just so important I think for everybody to see but especially us as kids mm -hmm. um there was no ego there was no you know I'm number one on the call sheet there was you know it was she just was so um just full of grace and love for everybody and um it was infectious her energy I think it was mm -hmm. we always wanted to she brought a you know she'd get that little sparkle in her eye which she brought a lot of that to Aggie in general but there was you know that was kind of she wanted to come on set and was like all right what are we going to do today you know and that was it was like okay great you know and that was that was awesome was this uh was this single camera or multi I, it was single camera we shot it much uh we shot it like a film so a lot of times we would just have either you know one or two cameras and that was that was before you know we had steady cams and stuff but it was before you know, a lot of the, the shooting now, which a lot of the, you know, the handheld sort of multi-camera right. kind of, um, you know, almost documentary style kind of thing. But this was right. very much shot, you know, like a like a film with a single camera. Did you have to adapt? Because you, it, it's interesting how your career's progressed. And obviously very different when you're on Broadway and your theater. And then multi-camera with Johnny Light and other projects and then single camera. So are you having to, to adapt to that a little bit? Or it, it was not a problem for you? It, it wasn't a problem. I think I was, I had done, um, I had done some commercials and some small roles and, and I think a couple, I think in film and I had been, I had done some like a, a sketch or two for Saturday Night Live. Like I had done a, a wow. few things that were um, different formats from uh, like the soap and, and right before I did Halloween Town. So that was, mm -hmm. I was used to it, and, but I also really fell in love with with that format because you really got to spend time with the scene and the characters and and move at a much slower pace. You'd only mm -hmm. usually do maybe four to five pages of dialogue a day, right. which is wow. very different from what nothing, I was I was like, nothing for you. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, we're going to slow this down a little bit. Awesome. You know, you get to wow. watch and see how they do special effects and all that. And that was just, you know, it, it's, it was always so exciting for me to, to really learn. I wanted to soak up everything I could about, you know, mm -hmm. who does what on set. So I think it's, mm -hmm. it's so cool. So creating this character, um, do you, you know, when, you, when you're becoming something fantasy, like a witch, mm -hmm. You're kind of going off of. You're using a lot of imagination. What did you What did you come up with? The character, the way you wanted to play this character. Well, I think I, I think I really related to Marnie's um, teenage experience. I think, and that's. I think she was relatable in that way to the audience, outside mm -hmm. of the magical powers, because she was just a thirteen year old that was trying to figure out who she wanted to be and who she was and really em embrace that. And I admired those character traits in her. I admired her courage and and her determination and her willingness to to jump in and, and figure it all out. So I mm. more focused on those aspects of Marnie and mm -hmm. it was 
it, it worked because I I feel like Marnie throughout the, the progression of the movie was um, figuring it out, figuring out what it was like to have magical powers as much as like the audience was watching her. So right. that was wow. um, that was an important part of her character that was a little bit natural to you know Kimberly also figuring out what it would you know be like to be a witch. Like that that part was such a I, I really feel like I got to grow up with Marnie and kind of go through that natural progression of oh okay what would I do with magical powers and then and then you know have fun with them so that aspect of it was um was just like oh you know being a teenager and and getting to have those those extra extra special qualities was um I mean that was a, a thrill to be able to uh you know, to try that on. I think every 13 year old would be like, what? I can turn, I can fly on a broom? Okay. Like, <laughs> sure, show me how. Like, that was, you know, <laughs> so it was fun. So that part you loved? The, yes. the All of those aspects of it? Oh, absolutely. I, I love um, just movie magic. I love being able to pretend to do these things and see how they put them together and the last day of shooting Halloween Town, the first Halloween Town, uh, Debbie and I spent it up on a, a big pole up on the broom um, wow. in front of a big blue screen, like pretending to fly around. And I just remember um, being like, this is, like, when am I ever going to be able to do this again? Like, you know, it was just <laughs> incredible. Well, with, with Debbie, with Debbie Red. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, when, you know, this, the, these kinds of, you know, days are not, these opportunities don't come along every day where you're like, I'm basically spending the entire day up on a platform with Debbie Reynolds and, oh, we're, we're pretending we're flying through the air because we're witches. Like, yeah. <laughs> so what was it like working on Disney? Disney was great. I, I loved watching the channel grow and um, watching, you know, them putting out they definitely, I think, at the time, they put out DCOMs, as they call them now, but the Disney Channel original movies much more frequently than they do now. But it was really fun as also a fan of theirs to watch them take um, sort of, I guess, teenage experiences and, and put a little twist on them. And I think that's why so many people enjoyed watching them and kind of found different aspects to all these, you know, whether it was a guy finding out he was a mermaid or... You know, all these different, like, right. things, like that there was, we, they were all real teenagers figuring out, um, figuring out their, their lives. So it was really nice to, to see that. And uh, the other movie I did with them, Quince, where I um, found out I, my mom was going to have five babies all at once was, um, again, another thing that, like, I can't directly relate to, but um, at the time I had, my youngest brother, Dylan, was six months when we filmed that movie and so you know again I could relate to a new a new addition to the family when you're a teenager and he actually ended up being in the movie but um you know I think it was just it was nice to see all these different elements of of what a teenager and growing up is like and then you know getting to put that fun imaginary you know twist on it and getting to see you know what what happens so you do the first Halloween Town and it airs, did you, I mean, did, is it one of those things that you just, and I've been, Barney was like this too. I was working on it before it was a big hit. Mm -hmm. And so you're doing something and you kind of feel it special, but you just don't, the next thing you know, it's huge. Was that kind of a, a shock to you a little bit when all of a sudden, you know, you loved it, you were with Demi Reynolds and you were flying in the air and all the wonderful things about it, but then it ends. But next thing you know, it's popular enough to have a second film. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It was it was so exciting. We, you know, had heard from Disney that it had great ratings and it was just like, Okay, great, you know, so happy that did well and you guys are happy with it and um and then when they approached a couple of years later, I think, about doing another one, I was so excited because Marnie was just I loved playing that character, and wow. um, the cast and I had become close and really thoroughly enjoyed just working and hanging out together. Wow! Um, so it was it was just so surreal to watch, and even mm -hmm. since then, I mean, that was 
in the late 90s, early 2000s, where you know, we didn't have social media or right. anything oh, wow. to do now. So it was, it was just such a different experience. And then since then, over the years, because of social media, I think it's also yeah. gotten such a, uh, you know, its life has, has continued because generations have, have been able to continue watching it. And it's been amazing to watch it grow and um, and just the biggest honor I think that people still want to watch it and still want to talk about it is thrilling um, for me as an actor because it's you know you want people to respond well to something you do but all these years later it just it touches me so much I get the sweetest messages from fans about how they love the movies or related or just you know it helped them in some way and how they were growing up and that's just that's the ultimate, um, the ultimate re- result I would love. Like that's, that's the reason why I do this is, is to hopefully touch people in some way so that it's just been the greatest gift. Mm. It, it's such a special, um, mm. relationship with, with fans of shows like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because you're teaching them. It's not just entertainment. They, they learn from your characters, whatever it, it may be, or they can relate, or you've helped them in, in some ways. Is that something, did you realize that when you were, probably not, because you were 13, but you're seeing now the effect that you had. It's not just a job, it's a lot more than that. Absolutely. I think, I yeah, I don't, I, I mean, I think I saw it with Debbie, and I think I saw how, mm-hmm. um, it, I, I definitely, Feel like I got to see how much she appreciated where she was in her career and yeah and how her work was really for other people as much as it was for herself and I think mm-hmm. I got to see that as a very young age but I really connected to it as I got older yeah and um, just really got to see and and hear from people directly you know years of, after they had seen it and it kind of it just kept continuing and it was like wow this is Whoa. This is still here, and, and not only am I so grateful for it, but it it really it gives you a different purpose to to go and you know audition for something or to get that no sometimes when you really want it to be a yes, and it's it, you know there's equally as frustrating days in the business as there are uh-huh. fantastic days, and and there have been so many times where I've gotten a message from a fan on a day where I've been you know bummed out, a little bummed out about something, and it's really mm-hmm. it's. It feeds me, I think, as much as as hopefully my work feeds everybody else. You know, it's it, it becomes a just a, a, a bigger thing, and I think it's important to hang on to that perspective in in uh, you know the the ebbs and flows of the business. Sure. So then there's a third one. <laughs> yes. Does does it? Do you try to reinvent the character? Do you? How do you keep life in a character when you've, you've gone one movie, two movies, now you're doing three movies? Do you feel that pressure, or do you just, it's like being home, that character um, you know so well? Yeah, I would definitely say it's it's like being home. I think they, I, I was excited at the, um, the, the different perspective we had in Halloween Town High, where it wasn't as based in Halloween Town, and we got to see what it would be like if, you know, people from Halloween Town came right. to the mortal world, and and Marnie really got to be a little bit more in charge mm-hmm. in that aspect. And um, Debbie and I had you know worked together for so long now, and mm-hmm. and had really really had fun in that one, playing with the different aspects of Marnie and Debbie's relationship, which wow. very much mirrored Kimberly and Debbie's relationship. We had a lot of fun together and tried things and goofed around with each other and wow, and were there for each other. And so it was. Um, it was so much fun for me to explore those different dynamics now that Marnie was older and, and really taking charge in a different way. And um, I, I, again, admired how she handled all of that. And I think um, it was it was just really nice to see her in a different kind of, I guess, you know, fully embracing all of all the, you know, all the potential that was there for her as, as a witch. Wow. Does um, when you're improvising, and I'm presuming you kind of talked, you were doing some able to do some improvisation and, and some things. a little bit here and there. We would do, we would do certain things. For the most part, we really stuck to the script. But there was, 
there were some moments, especially when you're trying to find the, the comedy beats of the scene where we would, you know, try some things or throw in a line here and there and, um, and you know, see, see what would happen. Do you, do you, did, did it get to a point with Debbie Reynolds that you forget that she's Debbie Reynolds, the legend, and she's just someone now that you're able mm -hmm. to kind of just work with and, and release Oh, yeah. That. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that happened very early on, I want to say, even in shooting the first one, because she yeah. was um, so grounded and... Wow. Well, like, you know, treated us all like peers, so just jumped in the scenes with us and um, didn't make it about all of that. It was, you know, we were all there excited mm. to to introduce these characters and feel them out and everything, and um, mm. that was, looking back on it, especially now, I mean, I wish I had, um, you know, recorded all of those moments with her, or, you know, done just, you know, mm. you think you're going to remember everything. And yeah. then years pass by, and you're like, oh, no, it's fading. But Man. because it just was so much, you know, I wish I could have. So, you know, I, I was very cognizant in every, in all the different moments with her um, to soak them all in, because I knew how special it was. And um, so grateful for that time, because she... She just really always looked out for me, and, and we just genuinely had a really, really great time together. What is it like to do the appearances? I've seen some of the appearances, some of the things um, that you've done. Mm -hmm. Being Taking Marty to the fans. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's the greatest thing ever. I, um, over the years, have traveled all over, and gotten to meet so many amazing people and hear their stories and show them, you know, uh, I have different, I have Marnie's uh, witch outfit from the second and third yeah. movie. And so was, a lot of times I bring some of that with me and, and show them. And it's, it's just incredible. That's when you really see how much of it is, is not really about you. It's about everybody else and making people feel happy and connecting with people and letting them know that they're loved and heard and understood. And it's just, um, it's the greatest gift. It's, it's a lot of fun and, um, it's still baffles me in the best way that all these years later that, um, that I'm still doing it and, and still being able to share, frankly, that, that magic of the movies with everybody. It's, um, it just makes me giddy and I'm so, you know, I'm so grateful for it. Well, yeah. I'm guessing I had to learn this at, at an early age of, of my Barney career. There's a responsibility. Yes. People ask me all the time, are you sick of hearing the I Love You song? No, I'm not. <laughs> I know how important it was. Yeah. It is. I'm presuming you've learned this lesson, too. Oh, I've gotten asked the exact same thing. <laughs> like, are you tired? Yeah. Of, like, you, you know, you had this long career. Like, are you tired of being referred to as Marnie or people wanting to talk about that. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Like that is, I mean, that's what you want people to be able to do. That's a, that's a huge, um, I'm flattered that people still want to talk about it. And, um, you know, if I can make some people happy by continuing to keep, you know, all of that, that memory and that magic of those movies alive, I am so honored to be able to do that for people. Were you a fan of Halloween back then before? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I was I was the mm -hmm. premier candidate for Halloween growing up because uh, I, you know, got to pretend to be other people, got to be, you know, a character for the night. Like, that was, I was all in, very young. You know, I was like, what are we doing? We're a princess? All right, great. Like, I'm making the wand. And, like, tonight I'm a princess and nobody can tell me differently. You know, so it was, yeah. <laughs> And then you got to go out and eat candy. I mean, I don't want, there is, there's nothing really better for, you know, a kid like me. <laughs> wow. Hey, for performers, we all love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So much already. Man. I, I've got to imagine doing movies on it, this whole, I'm presuming your love for Halloween's even grown. Oh, absolutely. And I, I feel like over the years, too, it's become so much more of a, um, a thing like an overall you know how like Christmas is a thing where it's like right. all month and you decorate for it and like you know and I was talking about it I think with a friend a, a while back but like how you know the stores used to just carry candy you know around the time and all that and now it's like you go on a Target and stuff mm -hmm. like that and there's just a whole section on it and you're like wow do I 
I might need to have a spider up on my wall. Yeah, I wasn't wow. thinking, you know, I'm like, it's just, it's a whole, it's a month long celebration. And like, I am here for it. You know, I, I think it's, it's great to be able to um, celebrate that, you know, our imaginations and our, you know, the, the fantasy and the magic because mm -hmm. the world is already crazy enough, you know, be, be, getting through life is already crazy enough as it is. So if we can have... Yeah. Those, you know, that holiday magic, I'm, I am, I'm all here for it, sign me up. Well, the escapism, I think, especially. Yes, that's, yeah, absolutely. Right now, what we're going through, and I know there's so much talk about how are we going to do Halloween with, with the virus and everything going on, but. Yeah, even though uh, it says, please stay safe this weekend, thank you, you deny and I'll be like, we're going to do, we're going to do, what the hell we're going to do, and figured June the 1st is going to do something, but anyway, let's continue on. So important absolutely for us to I, be able I, to, I may have to dress up this year just, just, man. Yeah. <laughs> just to escape is, is it cool for you that they still run those movies oh absolutely I think I have mm -hmm. um, I have three nephews and uh, who are all um, like 11 years old and, and younger now or oh. 12 and Wow. My best friend's little girl had just turned four, and she's watched the movie, and it's wow. incredible to see like a newer generation watch it and 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 just get lost in the magic in the same way. And um, wow, I you know I'm like wow, there's that you know there, my nephews. I think it was my oldest nephew Jackson was in the store one day. Uh, I think it was a few months after Debbie passed, and. He saw a magazine on the counter. It was with my sister, and he said, "Oh, look, mommy, it's Aunt Kim's grandma." And like, and it just, you know, it, it, it little things like that. Like, it's I just love that they that they get to partake now. So I'm so um, again with yeah. technology, I love that it's they're still airing, and now with them being on Disney Plus, and people can watch them. I get. Yeah, even though I'm I'm a Disney Plus subscriber, continue on. Notes from everybody and. Um, it's just, it's amazing. They, they continue to live on. Do, the, do your nephews, do they understand? Do they get the concept they of how you're, in it, how you're in it? They do. It's been funny to watch them as they grow up, kind of, because I, I see them a few times a year, not as often as I'd like, and they know, you know, okay, Aunt Kim lives in California, which is far away, and she's, you know, she's famous, and I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I'm an actor, like, I, I perform, and, uh, there was one day I was sitting in the car with them when I was visiting, and they were asking me a couple questions, and I remember it was, um, they were like, well, you know, what else, what else do you do? And I was like, well, you know, you know, they're like, you've been on TV, like, where else? And, and I was like, oh, and they're like, well, have you ever, you know, been on a commercial, or you ever been in a newspaper, or been in a magazine? And I just kind of was, yeah, I've done this and that, and so of all the things that we were talking about, my uh, nephew Maddox stopped me and was like, wait a minute, you were in a new and like that was like the coolest thing to him, you know, because he was like wow. six at the time. And I just, I love that. Like they're, but they're, they're slowly, you know, they're slowly <laughs> getting it. And it's, it's very, uh, it's a very fun experience to watch. <laughs> Man. So what are you doing these days? Well, I have uh, a couple different, um, I have an Etsy store now that I've had for the past five or six years that I, I started with one of my good friends because we used to love to craft on the weekends together and she makes mm. greeting cards and I would paint and it kind of started like that and then I started getting um, requests for quotes from Halloween Town and so I started painting that and then that grew into uh, graphic tees because I love graphic t-shirts and now wow. uh, now we have shirts with quotes from the movie we have uh, this year we came out with keychains from Halloween Town and wow. so it's turned into um, just a full fan-driven store. And so I that's another mm -hmm. way that I love connecting with fans. And um, so many of them thank me and, and tell me their stories from watching the movies. And, and it's, uh, it's really just, I so enjoy it. So I, I do a lot of that when I'm not shooting. Um, this year has definitely been different because of, of oh, COVID. Sure. I was supposed to be doing a sci-fi horror movie in July and that got pushed so wow um, we're hoping that can you know as the entertainment industry kind of slowly starts figuring itself out that that will um that will wow. be put back on the you know on the schedule soon 
And uh, and I in the meantime, I do stuff on my YouTube channel. I, I shoot original sketches and stuff like that. And um, you know, just enjoy being enjoy being creative. When there when the improv schools were open, I was doing a lot of improv with Second City and UCB. And you know, you just you keep um, keep those creative juices flowing. So yeah, uh, I'm grateful to to have these different avenues to explore and and um, you know keep connecting with people and keep performing. It's it's uh, it's just a, it's a huge gift, and I'm grateful to still be here after all these years. Well, it's it sounds like more than more than uh, around. You got a, <laughs> you got a lot going on there. Uh, I well, uh, know somewhat a little bit about Etsy, and I know how popular that can be. Wow! And, uh, it's, I guess it's if you watch us, Alex, for you, continue on. Definitely grown, yeah. How are, how are you balancing all your time? Uh, that's a great question. I I I. <laughs> don't know quite how to answer that um i have you know my my friend liz runs it with me and i i have um a lot of help and it it's it seems to a lot of times ebb and flow nicely like when i'm not as as busy um working on something then uh, you know it gives me a little bit more time to paint and do things so it's um it's it is quite the balancing act but it's i i love it it, it like i said it kind of keeps that keeps that creativeness flowing through you. And I think as a, as a performer, that's, that's what you're always looking for, you know. Do you have a favorite, do you, is it singing or is it TV or is it movies? Or do you have, obviously you love performing without question, but is there a favorite style or, or part of performing that you love specifically? I don't think I could narrow it down to just one. There's, there's so many different aspects of the different mediums that kind of fill you in a different way, whether it's, you know, being live or, um, you know, then sometimes just paring it down and spending all day on a scene is really fun too. You know, it's, um, it's been interesting to watch all the, the different mediums change and evolve now with, with streaming and all of that. Like right. it's, you know, there's so much of it done, um, a little bit quicker now. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's also fun doing the multicam thing because then you get to, you get to hear an audience laugh immediately, or you know, it's just um, all of them, or all of them kind of um, tickle you in different ways. I guess is a good, you know, a good way to put it. But um, it's definitely taught me a lot over the years. You know, shooting my own stuff too, and and directing it, and and cutting it together, and it's um, it's just it's a whole different it's a whole different world, but it's, it's so right. fascinating to learn all these different, you know, with YouTube and TikTok and all of these things. Yes. It's like, okay, this is cool. Cause now you get to, now you get to take it into your own hands and, and, um, and, you know, just have a blast that way. Yeah. I, I went to YouTube channel. <laughs> wow. And I can tell without doubt, and we'll have links to all of these things you're doing. There's out doubt you're having a blast doing that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's been, it's been fun to explore a little bit of that behind the camera creativity. Um, it was just one of those things that I was like, okay, I'm just going to jump into this and see what it's like. And it's, it's been a lot of fun to edit and, um, and direct in a way. And, but I can definitely, like I, I directed a, a, a we did like a little follow-up short film to wow. um, Halloween Town 2 where we uh, explored where Cal could be after he was kind of, he kind of flew off at the end of Halloween Town too. And yeah, moo, could do why. <laughs> people over the years have always asked me where he is, and so we uh, did a little short film um, in fun, saying that he was at Magic Rehab, and so that was one of the first ones that I did. That I was not on camera at all, and I uh, wrote it and directed it and edited it. But at the you know at different times it was so much fun. But at different times I was like, oh, so is this? Oh no, I'm not. I'm not on camera for this one. Okay, it was like you know it was. I kind of missed it a little bit, so it wow. was, but it's been it's been so much fun to um, explore those different sides of of, uh, of of making making projects. Well, and I was blown away by the um, the appearance you all made, and, and I'm, excuse me, I, f I forget which town you were in um, for Halloween Town. Oh, the Spirit where, of Halloween Town. Yes, where the yes. where they lit the pumpkin. Yeah, they've they've been doing that for years in St. Helens. I Helen's could Oregon. not believe how many people were there. When, when it was I, I couldn't either. Uh, because it was, turned, you turned to the crowd. I was like, oh my god! 
Yeah, the first year I went back, because they had been doing it for a few years, and then wow. they contacted me and said, you know, would you come up and light the pumpkin? And I was so excited because I hadn't been back, and it's a, the, just the greatest small town in St. Helens, Oregon. And the town square is very much what it was in the movie. They added the jack-o'-lantern, but the, the city hall and that small town feel is what the town is like. So, um, But the first year I went back, they were like, yeah, I think, you know, we've had... We've had a, a lot of, uh, you know, views on social media, and it hit the press a little bit. We think there's going to be some people traveling, and I was like, okay. Wow. And I showed up, and um, they they had to bring out, like, a full police force because there were, I think they had said over 15,000 people that showed up, and they just, they were in the streets. Like, we couldn't get, we had a whole plan for going through, and you're going to walk around here, and we couldn't get through, and I had to have a literal police escort, like, hanging on the back of a cop's um mm -hmm bulletproof vest as he like walked me through the crowd and everybody was there to light the pumpkin and celebrate the movie and see me and it was just wow i'll never forget it because it was one of the most just surreal amazing days of my life and since then we've gone back a few times with the cast and reunited and um it's just it's so special and we're you know again just so grateful because it's you don't get to do that all the time relive movies and and uh, certainly going back was fun for me just personally because I get to see everything again and, and relive a lot of those memories. But they still do it every year and they make it look like Halloween Town. People go visit from all over. I mean, internationally. It's it's incredible. I can't thank you enough for being on. It's just been a blast. Thank you. Talking thank you so much for having me. Same here. This has been really fun. It's, uh, it's, uh, you've had an amazing career and I can't wait to see where, where it goes next. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for being on today. Oh, thank you. And thank you for watching Purple Rose. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your Purple Rose. We'll see you next week. So that was Purple Rose, episode number um, 46. Kimberly uh, J. Brown of Howie Town. What do I think about this episode? It was amazing. So far, this episode went to be a success. And as the devil says, <laughs> But anyway, that wraps up for this episode. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one. It's going to be Purple Roads, episode 47. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be as of yet, but we'll see what happens. Till next time, so Jerry's goodbye. Peace out, baby. We'll get more videos, guys, very soon. Till then, jump straight out. See ya. Thank you.